I want to talk about a classic fantasy book. And this is one that I actually don't hear people talking about too much, even though it is like classic fantasy. One of the like OGs, like just a really fantastic old fantasy book. And there's a movie adaptation that we're also going to discuss about this book. And that is The Last Unicorn. Unicorn was written by Peter Beagle and it originally released in 1968. So this is a pretty old book. So kind of keep that in mind when you're reading it. This is an older fantasy book. We're going to start out talking about the book and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the adaptation and then I'm going to kind of like compare and contrast these. This is actually a concept that Andrew from Get Right On In came up with and we had talked about comparing like classic fantasy books like The Last Unicorn and um, like The Never Ending Story to their adaptations. And honestly, the adaptations of these are what are most well known, I feel like. Especially with like the never ending story that Andrew's gonna be talking about. But I even feel like more people know about like the Last Unicorn animated adaptation than know about the book. Honestly, I did not know it was a book to begin with. And I grew up watching this movie. As a child, this was one of my favorite cartoons. It's freaking dark and creepy and somehow it was like one of my absolute favorites. I actually have a DVD that is signed by the author of the book. So if that tells you anything, just know I really do enjoy the movie. Like it is peak nostalgia for me. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit. If you don't know what The Last Unicorn is, it is, like I said, a fantasy book set in a world where unicorns are real, but they are kind of uh, solitary creatures. They're immortal, they're beautiful, they are more beautiful than words. They are just these gorgeous ethereal creatures, but no one ever sees them. And we are following the perspective of our one unicorn who has no name and is just unicorn. And she kind of figures out that she's the last. Like they're very solitary creatures, so she never really thought of it through the millennia. But she hears these men talking in the woods and she's like, am I the last? Am I really the last unicorn? Am I truly the last? So she kind of like goes off on this adventure to find the rest of the unicorns and see what happened to them and she's not super likable she's kind of arrogant and a little strange but it's because she's not you know human she's the unicorn and they're immortal and beautiful and they know it <laughs> so she goes and ends up getting herself captured by this hag of a witch who runs a circus you really think those fools knew you without any help from me <laughs> no so that is kind of like the premise of the last unicorn where she's set out to find out why she's the last and what happened with the rest of them now i can't really go into anything else that i want to talk about in this video without it being kind of spoilery because I want to really go in depth in the book, in the movie, and compare and contrast. That is going to spoil both the movie and the book. If you have not read it, watched it, go do so and then come back and talk to me later. If you don't care about spoilers, then keep on keeping on. But this is going to be pretty spoiler heavy. Unlike most of my reviews, this is going to be a spoiler heavy just conversation about it. So, now that you're well aware, we are following Unicorn and she gets kind of captured by this old witch lady who runs a like traveling circus of magical creatures 
but come to find out these magical creatures are just like regular animals that have been glamored to appear like something else but the regular people see them as what they're told they are so like we have just like a dog but they say that he is Cerebus the three-headed dog of hell but really it's just a dog that's been kind of glamored and the unicorn can see through this because obviously she is a real unicorn and then there is one other like real creature and that is the harpy that has been kind of captured so there are these two but this harpy is very very evil like it's it's violent it wants to murder i mean can you blame it it's a immortal magical being that's been captured in a cage by a hag so there's that what he calls a manticore looks to be no more than a shabby toothless lion this is where we meet Schmendrick the magician and Schmendrick is kind of part of this traveling circus and he ends up helping the unicorn escape. Now he is not a uh, very talented magician that we realize like he's just kind of he messes up a lot and he's kind of bumbling and he really wants to help but like he's just not very good like he can't even get her out of the cage magically he had to steal keys. So. Those brittle as old cheese, which I crumble and scatter so. What? Oh, I must have gotten the accent wrong. He releases the unicorn, the harpy gets out as well, kills the hag, and then Schmendrick and Unicorn kind of run off into the woods. She says that, you know, I will, you know, thank you, I will grant you one, like, wish or one thing. I will give you a boon. And he's like, I just want to come with you and help you and figure out. And he's, she's like, okay, fine, you can come with me. <laughs> At that point, you're like, okay, whatever. She's just like, whatever. They meet, you know, they kind of, they travel through this land because they hear these rumors about this King Haggard and his Red Bull. And that is kind of where they're going to like explore for the unicorns. They go like kind of town to town. And we end up meeting this like band of robbers in the woods, very Robin Hood-esque, but not Robin Hood, if that makes sense. So we end, that's where we end up meeting Molly, who is this like kind of older woman who helps out with this like band of robbers. And they basically want Schmender to prove that he's a real magician. So he ends up calling up actual magic and making illusions of like Robin Hood walk through the woods. And they get mad about this. So they like tie him up to a tree and then he magics the tree comes to life. The unicorn has to save him and then Molly actually ends up running off with Schmendrick and the unicorn to go find this castle because she sees the unicorn and she's like, oh my god, I have to help you too because like she's beautiful and like everyone just wants to help this unicorn. They find this, the castle where Haggard is. They end up kind of meeting him and his son who is not really his son. He's like this baby that he found at a village in the middle of winter like just like this random baby so that actually becomes important later so we meet up with them he's like this weird old guy who like nothing makes him happy i am king haggard this is prince lear my son hi and he ends up firing his current magician who is like amazing and replacing him with Schmendrick because he knows that Schmendrick sucks. So he's like, a good magician hasn't made me happy. Maybe a bad one will. And oh, I forgot. I'm like so off track. This is so all over the place. At one point, while they're making it to the castle, the Red Bull attacks them and Schmendrick turns Unicorn into a princess. So she is now a human girl when they approach the castle. So he turns her into a human, but he can't really turn her 
back because he doesn't control his magic very well. They end up being accepted and the prince ends up falling in love with the human girl, Unicorn. And he's like trying to do all these things to impress her. Like he's like slaying dragons and becoming a hero and like nothing. She does not care. She gives not one fuck, right? But she kind of starts to as she kind of starts to become human as opposed to a unicorn. So she's like losing a lot of her memories as to why they're even at this palace. Molly, who am I? It's just strange, y'all. <laughs> like I feel like this is like the weirdest explanation. Um, come to find out, he kind of, the king evil guy kind of figures out that this girl is a unicorn in human form and he shows her where the rest of the unicorns are and they are in the sea there they are they are mine they belong to me the red bull gathered them for me one by one and i bade him drive each one into the sea like so they are sea foam basically they are they are trapped in the sea by the bull they will not come out of land they will not you know, touch land, they're, they're chilling in the sea, right? It's, makes no sense. And she like gets really confused and cause she's starting to like not remember. And they end up going down to find the Red Bull, right? She's kind of fallen in love with the prince, but then she's like, no, I'm gonna complete my mission. Like I, even though I don't really remember it, we're gonna go for this. They end up trying to go down to find the Red Bull and the Red Bull ends up attacking them of course and it attacks and it ends up killing the prince and then she just kind of goes buck wild like schmendrick ends up turning her back into a unicorn and she fights off the bull and then the unicorns are free and she ends up healing the prince saving his life reviving him but then you know she's still a unicorn so she's just she goes on off to be her unicorn self and the prince is kind of pissed and he's like, I don't know what's going on. And it's like a whole thing. She's attacking. That sounded interesting to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Cause I am the worst at this, but it's really hard to explain the entire premise of this book. <laughs> But there's so much more. There's so much more to it than what I just said, but that's just kind of like the overarching stuff that happens, like the big stuff, right? The reason that we kind of went through like this overarching thing of big stuff is because I want to talk about comparing it to the movie. Now, I loved the movie growing up, as I said earlier, and this is my first time reading the book. And honestly, it is probably the most close adaptation book to movie I've ever seen but I also attribute that to for one it's being animated so it's really really easy to get these like fantasy stories done well when they're animated right also um Peter Beagle the author is also the screenplay <laughs> author so like he had a big hand in the movie itself so it kind of makes sense that it would be pretty scene for scene adaptation wise. There are a couple things in the book that I actually think translated better to film and that is like the written songs. So in the book there's songs, right? But it's written songs. Like I don't, if I have struggle with that in any book where there's written songs because I can't get down like a tempo or like a tune <laughs> but when I hear it like in a movie it's like okay it's a song they're singing it there's music so I actually think that translated better to film than it did in the book itself I was long ago someone strange another thing I noticed kind of about the book is that people in this book tend to kind of realize that they're in a fairy tale. Like the prince realizes that he needs to be a hero and play a part and do his part in this fairy tale. Schmendrick realizes that, you know, this is a story and this is how the story must go. So it doesn't like fully break the fourth wall, but like 
these people are very aware that they're in a fairy tale setting so it's a little jarring like it's a little strange to read that but I also really liked it the book is also super super descriptive for being so short like it's not a long book at all but it is very description heavy but not in like a Robert Jordan Thickle book way like it does descriptions really really well for what it is for as short as it is like you can really like see her meadow that she lives in in the very beginning of it and you can kind of picture everything in your head really really well because it is so descriptively written and like I said the movie differences are pretty minimal there were a couple things that bothered me a couple things that I wish had been in the movie and a couple things that they changed that I'm like why would you do that why did you put that in there but overall there are very minimal changes between the book and the movie. If you haven't seen the movie, I recommend going and picking it up because it has a really famous cast, especially for like their voices. Like they're not people that I typically think of as like voice actors, but they all lent their voices to this movie in an amazing way. We have Mia Farrow, who voices the unicorn. We have Angela Lansbury, who voices Molly. We have Jeff Bridges, who voices the Prince Lear. We have Alan Arkin, who voices um, Schmendrick the Magician. And we have Christopher Lee, who voices King Haggard. Like, that is one heck of a cast, right? In doing my research, something I thought was super interesting was that Christopher Lee was a big fan of the book. And he came to the audition with his book in hand and said that he would do it as long as they didn't change King Haggard's dialogue. He wanted the word for word book dialogue. And you know what? He got it and it works and he does it so well. I mean, it's Christopher Lee. Everything he did, he did exceedingly well. So props to him for doing this book justice. One thing that I kind of missed from the book to the movie, I didn't even know that I needed it, but after reading the book, I was like, why didn't we put this in the movie? Is that there's another plot point. There is this curse and this land that belongs to King Haggard is cursed. And the only person that can break the curse is a son born of this like one village. And this village is, cursed to be prosperous so you're like what like they're they're the only village in this whole land that belongs to king haggard that is actually prosperous and that is because they did not help the unicorns when the red bull was rounding them up to the sea they were cursed by a witch and they will prosper and prosper and prosper but somebody born of that village is the one that's going to be the downfall of the king and them so they stop having babies they stop reproducing like to not break this curse because they're prospering while the rest of the land is dying basically um but the prince that was found was actually born of this village and this one villager like put him out there and then the king came and took him so the king raised this baby as his own because he thought he would like that too because that's like the whole thing with King Haggard is he like, well, I'm trying to be happy. And then after a while, this don't make me happy anymore. So that's kind of his like character arc. Well, this prince is raised as his son is also now the one that you know is supposed to be the downfall of this kingdom. And I really wish they'd have left that in because it was a really cool plot device. It was a really cool like little side story and then it ended up making sense because the prince fell in love with the unicorn and he helped her and by doing so caused the destruction of his father, his father's kingdom and that village. Like that village is not even in the movie at all whatsoever. We don't even see it. I want to say it's called Hagsgate or something along those lines but we don't see it at all and it ends up getting destroyed by the unicorns when they flee the sea palace falls down and kills the king and now the prince becomes the king of this land another thing 
thing that they kind of changed were the guards. They didn't really have these like very few old guards in the movie like they were in the book. They ended up kind of, there's like these three guards, they ended up kind of being friends with Molly and they're really nice guys and the only reason they serve the king is because they kind of have to, like they're also cursed, like they kind of are stuck there. Um, so but we don't really get them in the movie and while they're not a huge plot point in the book, I liked them because there's this one scene where Schmendrick and the unicorn as a human and Molly are running away trying to find the red bull and the guards are supposed to attack them while they're like not wanting to because they became friends with them so they're like literally doing whatever they can to not attack their new friends so that's when you know the king comes out and is like I'll do it myself <laughs> So that was really cool and the fact that after the unicorns ran off and the kingdom fell, they actually survived and became young again, which still didn't really make sense even in the book. Like why did they become young again? And they attribute it to a joke that they told um, the princess girl unicorn about something about being young forever or something like that being young again so they ended up being young again after they kind of helped in their own little way it was cool it was just like a little difference that really made no difference to have in the movie or not but I liked it there's another like little there's a couple like little things that I don't understand from the movie after reading the book and one of them is that people touch the unicorn a lot in the movie like they pet her right and in the book everyone is like not really they ain't gonna touch her because touching her is like pretty sacred like you can't really just touch the unicorn because it does things and does magic and you're like well, why is everyone all touchy touchy in the movie so I didn't really understand that it's not like a big deal but it was one of the differences the violence in the movie is also toned down which kind of makes sense because like it's a cartoon like kids movie so it is kind of toned down in violence and the book itself is not super violent but it is toned down for the movie like when the prince dies at the end like it's gross and bloody and nasty and he's like his face is caved in and but in the movie you just kind of like see him lying in the sand another change that bothered me and it's funny because apparently this also bothered the author and he's mentioned it at conventions and was like I don't even know how that slipped through is in the animated version they put boobs on things that shouldn't have boobs it's weird so the scene with the tree where the tree comes to life and Schmendrick is tied to it. Um, in the book, the tree comes to life and she does like want to fall in love with Schmendrick, but she's not like the sexy, voluptuous titty tree. And in the actual like animated movie, they make her this like sexy, voluptuous titty tree. And it's like really weird and uncomfortable. <laughs> I love you. Love, 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 love. Oh, what have I done? And then they also add boobs to the harpy, which is not mentioned in the book. Like, for some reason, she's got, like, three boobs, and you're like, why, though? I don't understand, but whatever. They give this harpy bird three boobs. for zero reasons. So that's another one that I thought was kind of uh, entertaining. There's also some differences with Schmendrick and I wish the Schmendrick differences would have made it into the movie. One is like his whole legitimate backstory, how he trained as an uh, apprentice and how he is actually cursed as well. He is cursed to be immortal. We get none of this in the movie. Schmendrick is immortal. 
and the only way he can become mortal is by coming into his power because he just is like a half rate not very good bumbling magician but really there is power dormant inside him that he's never been able to release magic do as you will magic do as you will helping the unicorn actually helps him be able to release this power and become mortal. And I thought it was a really cool plot point, but we don't get it in the movie and I really wish we would have. Along with not getting like Schmendrick's backstory, which I think would have been like super interesting to get in the movie, we also don't get this like level of foreshadowing. So Schmendrick ends up telling a story about how his mentor at one point turned a unicorn into a human in order to save it, but he could never turn it back. So the unicorn died as a mortal man. And we get this whole story and the unicorn's like, that was terrible. I would rather just have been attacked as a unicorn and died than that happened. So it's kind of like foreshadowing for what ends up happening except for Schmendrick is able to turn her back and then in doing so he breaks his curse. But that's really all the differences and they're very very minimal. So if you've seen it and read it you kind of know like they're not super important even though there's a bunch of things I would have liked to have seen. Mainly the curse with Schmendrick and the curse with the like townspeople. Other than that though, I love it. It's such a good adaptation and I really enjoyed the book, probably mostly for like nostalgia reasons though. There were a couple things that didn't like make sense either way though. Like why were these unicorns stuck in the ocean? Like are they amphibious? Can they breathe underwater? Like why are they stuck in the ocean on one beachfront? Like why didn't they just swim away? to like the other side, they're immortal. Why didn't they just like swim away and like come out on land in another beach, right? Like that just, it never made sense to me. And then there's so many of them, right? There's enough of them to trample a town and bring down a castle. Why did they never fight back? Like, were they that scared? They're immortal beings. Why did they never fight back when the bull pushed them into the ocean? Those two things did not make sense to me. And I'm like, I still want to know the answer to that. Why didn't they fight back? And why didn't they just leave on another ocean shore? If you know, please tell me. So hopefully you enjoyed this. I had fun reading this and then rewatching the movie and then kind of writing down and discussing the differences like between the movie and the film and like doing some research and seeing why it is the way it is. Like why the movie is so similar. Like all the stuff with the voice actors that like wanted the movie to be the same as the book. Like I just found it really interesting and hopefully you enjoyed it too. If you want me to do more like book to adaptation type videos, let me know because I had a lot of fun doing this one. And if you have one that you want me to do, let me know because I think that would just be, that would be really cool. All right, well, thank you guys for hanging out with me. My name is Jessie and I will talk to you later. Bye.